Okay, let's start. Uh, hello everyone, my name is Alexis Lopez Vieta. I work as developer of the AppImage project. I've been a contributor for about like three years now, and I will be talking about app images in general and how to make them using app image build. Uh, let's proceed. App image has uh, two main design premises. From the user point of view, they have to be easy to that, to acquire and to run, just like we do with a Windows or a Mac application. And from the developer point of view, uh, the application should be able to run in almost every no Linux distribution, not and not having to make a package for every single Linux distribution. Now, an app image has this structure. It's a, a main executable and a compressed uh, directory. This executable will mount the directory using Fuse and will run the app inside. This, the, the payload, as we call it, is a read-only image containing the app binaries that are and all the other resources that it might require to run. An app image, it's all batteries, in, includes all the batteries and all the th stuff that an application might require to run. It it's, has very few external dependencies, only a few graphical libraries, SSL, and other libraries that are that might come in almost every Linux distribution. Some kind of app images do, uh, includes more dependencies than others. Uh, app image builder is one of is one of the tools that include most things. Why? Because, because we are looking for a maximum portability, and of course, no installation would be required. Okay, next slide. Okay, App Image Builder. App Image Builder is a new tool for creating app images. It is re recipe based and has as assisted recipe generation. It's the resulting app images will be backward and forward compatible and also can be created in modern systems unlike other existing tools for creating app images. Also, it has the ability of patching fixed, fixed path at runtime, which means uh, as a developer, you have control over your application, but you don't have control over your application dependencies. If a dependency has a fixed path that cannot be changed at runtime, you're, you will have a hard time like creating a, an app image of it. Now with App Image Builder, this is solved. Okay. Next slide. Okay, the App Image Builder has a new payload structure. We, we, it provides a custom entry point named AppRAM. It embeds libc, glibc, ld Linux, and also at runtime, it compares the version of the glibc embed in your app image and the one running in your system and picks the newer one to run the whole application. Also, it has runtime hooks. These hooks provide the path interception ability and also allows to keep the runtime environment of your bundle confined. This is not sandboxing, this is just uh, for uh, avoiding that the runtime of your bundles get mixed with your system or an other application uh, runtimes run and libraries. Okay. Now let's. I would like to show you more how to do it with a, a functional example. In this case, I'm going to be packaging 
num calculator. Let me share my screen right now. Okay. Can you see it? Okay, the first thing is to, of course, get the sources. Um, we'll be building non calculator 3.30.0. Uh, so, once you, you have the sources, you have to build it and install it to an app there. The app there will be the starting point for creating our app image and will be what the the content of the final bundle. First, we're deploying our application uh, binaries and resources. Notice that it's important that things like the desktop file and icons get deployed into the app tier. Like this. This desktop file will be used by the app image builder to properly generate the recipe. Now, the second step is to make sure that our application runs. In the case of non-calculator, it requires, it has a, a, a GLib schema, schemas that need to be compiled. We're going to do that. And we're going to try our application, okay? Now it's running. Let me share it again. Okay, okay. We have the the calculator application running. Once we have the application running in our development system, we proceed to uh, generate the recipe using App Image Builder. If we use some environment variable like to run our application, we will have to use it also with App Image Builder as it runs the application in order to resolve dependencies. We use the generate a feature of App Image Builder. It run. This will look for our desktop entry and we'll read the application information from it, like the ID, application ID, name, icon, version, the main executable, and arguments that will require. Also, it will ask us for the architecture of the final binary. The application is now running. It is important that when the application is running, you uh, use almost and try almost every feature of the application. Why? This application is being run with S trace and LD debug libs in order to uh, discover which binaries and libraries and resources are being loaded at runtime. So if you use it, you should like try almost every plugin and, and feature in order for them to be loaded in memory and to be discovered by the generate tool. In this case, uh, the calculator application is quite simple, so it's fine to, to, to do it so far. Okay. Now, let's go back to the terminal and add a recipe and a bmash builder file was created. Let's take a look at it. In this file, we will find all the application information that we were prompted for, the runtime configuration. This is, these are the library paths that will be used by our application and will be also information about the the apt sources configured in our system in this case for the final recipe i will not need nor docker no vs code also i will not need steam nor node it is important that for the final uh, recipe you 
remove the allow unauthenticated uh, sources as this might be like a source of for uh, bad software get into your final bundle. I'm leaving you instead you should like add something like key URL and add put there the the your the URLs of the different repositories. So let's below you will find a list of the dependencies that AppImage Builder generate found. Basically is the conf the as I'm running KDE Neon, it says that KDE config GTK style is a dependency. If you build this package in a normally, probably this will not be part of your recipe and you can like safely remove it. In this case, I'm leaving it as it pulls other dependencies like libgtk3 and everything gets pulled from there. So I'm leaving it there for the moment. The exclude list can be used like to opt out in some packages that you might not want in your final bundle. Uh, also the files and this part is one of the most interesting. App Image Builder will run the final bundle in different environments. In this case, it will run it on Fedora, Debian, Arch, CentOS, and Ubuntu. This will give you like a certainty that our final bundle will run in the, those target systems. It is super important like to try as much as you possible as because you no know, Linux distribution change a lot. Library names might change. A lot of things might change from one distribution to another. So always test. Okay, so far this recipe should be good to to build. So I'm saving it and running app image build. Okay, the first thing that a image builder will do is like update the 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 apt sources and then it will download all the required packages and will deploy them into the app tier as you might see okay let's give it some time after the all the binaries are on are deployed it configures the application runtime. This is basically, it sets a custom a interpreter path for every binary in the, in the bundle. This path will be used to be able to switch at runtime, which GLBC and LD Linux will be used. Also, it sets configuration for Qt as as we are building in a KDE based environment. Some Qt might have slid into the bundle. Sets the JTK configuration and other things. Now it is running the the application in Fedora. I will show you. Okay, this is the application running on a Docker container of Fedora. I'm going now, it's, it will run it on the next one. This is Debian. You might see that the icons and the fonts may change from one system to other as it adapts to the system uh, team. Now it's Arch. No icon for Arch. Maybe Arch do doesn't have that icon in the team. And sent us. Okay. Next. And finally, event. Okay. Now we're sure that our application runs on all our target systems. And the the build proceeds to create 
the final bundle, which would be named. This bundle is ready to be shipped as it is, as you might say. I, well, you, you should not see it too much there. <laughs> okay, now you do, now you do. So this is the, our final bundle. It is, it is quite big and now we will see why. If we go into the app there and check the bundle GML file, we can see which packages ended inside the bundle. In this case, we are bundling a whole icon term at Wita, at Wita, Wita, well, how do you say? That probably can be opt out. We are also, oh, oh, actually we are bundling three icon teams. This happened because of the APT dependencies. All of them are being pulled inside the bundle. Now you have like to manually opt out uh, the things that you consider that can be excluded. To do the, so, we're going to we are going to use the exclude section. Okay, add which remove a with we're going also to remove high control and humanity I can turn. Okay, okay, okay. I probably can remove the whole gear five stuff on on a lot of QD. But if I remove this one, I probably if I remove this one from the include list, I will not get the dependencies included. So I might need to do something like this. So uh, okay, okay, icon, icon, and um, instead of like this depends on a lot of stuff that's why our bundle is so big would probably we would only probably need this section of the dependencies and not the whole kf5 stuff let's give it a try notice that you can like do this in order to force a given package version. So those entries are fully passed to a to APT install. You can also do this in order to enforce a package from a, a different architecture to be bundled. Just make sure that you allow you add this architecture in your source lines. But in order to make your your recipe like more versatile or more compatible, we will not enforce in any dependencies. Okay. Let's sorry. Let's give it another try. It is always a good idea to start fresh when making an app image because it may affect the execution. The one previous execution of a image builder can affect the, the next one. So always it's a good idea like to start fresh and to be sure that no uh, but no things from the previous iteration gets into no. Okay, my recipe is probably is probably wrong. Okay. 
Yeah, that's it. Okay. There we go. Now we'll run everything again and it should opt out the packages with with file. And the final bundle should be smaller. Okay, it's against generating everything. Sorry for the time. It takes a bit of time to build, even a simple application. Now it's running Fedora. All the test cases are being run. I'm getting the okay. Now the, the, the application is being built. And we remove a few megabytes. If we could keep doing this process, we can like remove a lot of more uh, a lot more of like packet and we are still someone is still pulling like KF5. So we we will need like to do this a few times or more or use like a pure like virtual machine machine to to get like less dependencies pull it by default but so far this, this is a uh, how a image builder creates an app image as you can see there is also the sources that were used to create the bundle so you might like try to reproduce uh the fine the, the final bundle and this is also important dependencies what are those dependencies those are the libraries that are required to be installed in a system for the bundle to run basically you will find that things like libxcv and libgl libdl font config and others lib crypt and others are required those are usually in every system so uh, it's expected to to run this kind of bundle those include much more th stuff that traditional bundles so um than, than traditional bundles so a uh, more uh, sorry <laughs> but what means that some critical uh, software might slip in to the to the application so it's recommended for you to recreate the the packages and the bundle every time like a security patch it's released so you where you should publish your application well the first place to go is your web or repository at github GitLab. There's where a image file should live. It, also, you can like add them to to the existing list, listings, which are AppImage Hub and AppImage.GitHub.io. You can like add your software to those listings so they can be reached and found by users. Okay, some reference projects that keep get can be useful like to check how others are using this tool and what are they doing and um, this the first reference is the maui builds project this is super interesting it's made on GitLab. it produced native emd64 builds and it also cross compiled for erm64 and builds an android ap android apks so th this is one of the most like complex but also powerful configuration for like if you are having a project to ship it and build it for many different platforms also there is this mystic uh, video converter tool seal is also using 
uh, a image builder. There's a uh, case stars pull requests for using for building a image using a image builder and a G or recipe also. So uh, about the issue issues I was talking about bundling everything as I said uh, has uh, an important uh, security issue. Critical software is frozen inside the bundle. That's why you should like set up a continuous build environment and recreate bundles every certain time or every time that uh, a library that is bundled in, in your in your package gets a security update. Uh, it is using AppImage already support like Delta updates, so your user will not have to download the whole bundle, only the parts that it uh, that change it if it's done well. Extra size, uh, yes, your bundle will be a bit bigger than it's about 30 megabytes bigger because of GLBC is being bundled, which is this isn't doesn't happens with other tools like Linux deploy. Uh, why are we bundled in GLBC? Basically, because we are looking for all this allows two things. First, uh, portability. Our all solution will be able to be used in system with another libc than the one we built the application and on system with newer libc thanks to the backward compatibility of gldc on also because it allows us to build the bundles in newer system this is not possible for a uh, with tools like linux deploy where you have to focus on the latest stable release, by example, of Ubuntu or CentOS. Uh, and this like can become like a nightmare if you have like if dependencies that are too new or, or are not compatible or require tools for building that are not available in those systems. And the final issue is never use untrusted sources for your bundle. Always go with the official repositories to create your bundles. Okay, where you can learn a bit more App Image Builder, well, check the docs of App Image and the App Image Builder documentation. You can also check for other App Image, App Image projects on Asom App Image. And if you have questions, uh, go to our IRC channel or ask in Stack Overflow. We will gladly uh, answer and be there to support you. Finally, this is my wish list for those people that make desktops. And uh, basically, we will love from the Appimage uh, project to see thumbnails for a image like in every file manager we would like to be able to double click an app image and it get executed and it get the execution permission of course you can you will always like warn the user about the implications and you will like not warn them that don't run software that they don't get from a trusted source also the crash reporting if the application fails to to start to notify the user what work went wrong not just keep do nothing also we would like to see integration with the system menus like something like maybe in the file manager you do right click add to the menu and that's it for doing this we have libapp image that is already capable of doing all this it just needs to be integrated so as is the, the file managers and the, the system menus and the desktop environments are not our domain as a project we are not a, capable of like pushing those changes a, the kde project has already done a lot of on this and that's really great that we you can right now you can in KDE Neon, by example, you will have like icons for 
um, thumbnails for your application app images, and you will be able to, like to double click and just run it. So that was my presentation. Thank you for for listening and. Please, if you have any questions, feel free. Thank you so much for your presentation. Yes, there are a few questions in the shared notes. Um, let's read them out together. The first question is, what does backward and forward compatibility mean? Can I build on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed and run on CentOS 7? OK. A uh, right now, App Image Builder is only capable of using APT as package manager. So you will have to run it on uh, on a Ubuntu or Debian based or another system which also use APT. So you right now you cannot build the App Image on OpenSUSE Tumbleweed, but you can build it on Ubuntu or What's the last is Bionic? I forgot the code name for Ubuntu 20, 2004. But you can build it on Ubuntu 2004 and it will run on previous uh, on all the system without issue at all. And also might run in newer system that came thanks that GLIPC is being bundled. Yep. Great. Okay, the next question is, can source code or RPMS also be used as an ingredient instead of dev? Uh, right now, uh, in the example, I'm building from source code. So, so you will have like manually built like every uh, ingredient and deploy it into the app here, as I did with the main application, um, main application binaries. So yes, but it's not uh, in the way that you will do it with Flatpak that is part of the recipe. You can also like uh, add the dirt. Let me show you. You can do something like BIM image builder. Okay, I already, I already have it over here. You can like create something. You can add scripts to the recipe, so you will like uh, make install all all for all the dependencies or ingredients that are built from source code. Make them install them to the up there something like this you can use something like this and get everything installed before like creating your final bundle so next one okay the last question that we have here says instead of excluding the whole icon set could one trace the application to see which icon files are actually needed Okay, uh, this is partially due, done, sorry, uh, not, but it's not like complete yet. Uh, the output of S-Trace can be like checked, yes, so you can like use something like that. And I guess that that's a good issue for our feature request for the project.